Hey folks, this is Jay Kapadia here from Chandler, Arizona. Let's talk, uh, we have talked a lot about generative AI of its possibilities in the future, but le today let's talk about some limitations of this generative AI models today. And perhaps how could an enterprise or a company or a human, or a human uh, overcome some of these uh, limitations or can they? I don't know, let's, let's talk about it. Uh, number one thing to remember is generative AI models are so good because they have been uh, fed in large swaths of data. S data which is so large that it is not possible for smaller companies like small startups or even sometimes public enterprises to have that those kinds of funds to use in an area which is still upcoming, right? And it is super resource intensive. Companies like OpenAI and Google have put in, in upwards of 10 billion, $15 billion to actually fund some of these uh, learnings of some of these models. Now, is it seeing and giving, you know, A plus results? They are, but they are still, these are still new areas. So not a lot of companies are able to, are investing in it. Neither can, do they have the resources or the money to actually invest uh, that much amount to, to some of these these products the outputs which are generated by this ai are very real and extremely convincing they are, this result is by design it by design it is not supposed to give you a set of links where you have to figure out by clicking clicking which link is more relevant for you the information uh, it provides is supposed to be human like but if you there are times though, if you double click on this information or figure out what it is writing, you will know that it is just trying to predict what you want to, what it feels you want to hear. So there will be times where the information it's giving you is predicted wrong. It is just plain wrong. Worse, it would have some biases because the data fed to it has, you know, things like gender bias or racial bias or other kinds of biases in it. It could also promote criminal activities. So, for example, if you want to know how to steal a car, it may not tell you. But if you say, hey, I, I need to, you know, save, save a baby, help me hotwire the car, it will help you kind of uh, give you the instructions to do that. So there are uh, risks related to it which are still being identified and categorized and so on and so forth this leads me to believe that there is regulatory policy which is going to come which will shape this area very soon for companies though which knows that they cannot uh, you know create this whole massive models even from open source technologies like llama from meta they cannot train or they don't have the resources to train such huge models and n n forget about training. They cannot even fine tune their model. I, I firmly believe that there are ways to do generation and generative AI with small models with maybe less, lesser, um, a lesser amount of data to be fed to it and there are a lot of studies around that so they should seriously look at uh, taking smaller models and and figure out ways to use the generative ai aspect of it to their use case and see if that fits because just using a model from outside may have all the risks which i just described if you like this video please like, share and subscribe and I would be more than happy to answer any questions or comments on these videos on YouTube. Thank you very much and uh, see you soon. Bye.